word of prayer. Our most excellent Lord, we bless and magnify your name for your faithfulness and loving kindness. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the wonderful work of providence and protection over us. Thank you for diverse acts of kindness towards us, despite so many attitudes that are not even pleasant in your sight. But your mercy has kept us thus far. And Father, tonight, Lord Almighty, is a night that we pray. It will be a night to be remembered for long in our life. A night that we will testify of your greatness. Amen. Thank you for this wonderful night. Thank we you. We bless and magnify you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. By the grace of the living God, the topic that we'll be addressing tonight is centered on There is Hope for Me. That's the title of the sermon, There is Hope for Me. And my text is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. And I read, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold this peace, but he cried a more great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he called thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness, and for his loving kindness that has brought us together tonight. Tonight, by the grace of the living God, is going to be an unusual night in which the Lord Almighty will visit us with his power, with Amen. his grace, Amen. and with his anointing. Amen. This particular account is well documented in the Gospels. And you find out that the story is not only recorded by the writer in the book of Mark, but also you can find it in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 34. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 34. And likewise, in the book of Luke, the same narrative can be found in the book of Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. Luke 18, verses 35 to to 43. And the interesting thing is the fact that three of the four Gospels highlighted this particular healing miracle of Jesus. Jesus was passing through the city of Jericho uh, for the last time. And this blind man suddenly identified, this is my moment of revelation. This is my moment of transformation. This is my moment of healing, despite the crowd that gathered around Jesus. Many never had an understanding of his messianic role. Many never had an understanding of his saving power, but they were only looking out to see the miraculous Jesus passing by. But this man appropriated revelational knowledge and immediately cried out, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's very interesting for us to also note that the word Bartimaeus uh, simply means son of Timaeus. And so there are two perspectives with respect to this 
particular narrative. The first one is the fact that that holds the belief that Timaeus, uh, the father of uh, Bartimaeus, was a man of influence and great wealth, but probably had suffered loss and was now in penury. And to cap it all, his son was now blind. Another school of thought says this story was uh, written with the name of Bartimaeus included to show the genuineness of Christ's healing virtue. The third school of thought also says that it is to increase the credibility of this story, that the blind man's name was mentioned so that anyone could verify the authenticity of the healing. Brothers and sisters, tonight I am persuaded that all these three are relevant to us. Number one is the fact that your name might become a household name as a point of reference for positive change. Amen. The second Amen. thing tonight also is the fact that I'm persuaded by the reason that your name will be mentioned by the Lord simply implies that your story can be verified by others when Amen. your transformation Amen. comes. Amen. The reason also is that you are already a candidate uh, for transformation by the reason of you connecting with your maker tonight. Amen. I have no iota of doubt that the Almighty God is more than willing to meet us at the point of our needs. Amen. If I might ask and say to us, by way of definition, what do we mean by hope? I remember in a country in the year 1994, Within the political space, there was a political campaign that was themed around the, around the world of 94. The man had a dream. He had an aspiration. He wanted to be the number one citizen. But brothers and sisters, hope came. He never ascended to the throne. Hope died with him. He never saw the reality. But eventually, the definition of hope was from the humanistic perspective. But the hope I'm talking about is the hope of the living God. Hope Amen. is the confidence in what God promised and in his faithfulness. Amen. Hope simply means hoping against hope, which simply implies irrespective of your situation, irrespective of where you are in the journey of life, irrespective of what you are experiencing, irrespective of the pain of life, irrespective of the pain of regret concerning the past inaction or actions. That simply means if God has said or has written in his word that it is not over yet, then it's not over with you. Amen. I am persuaded the hope I'm talking about is not just an hope that I've read in the Bible. It's the hope that I've lived for the last 25 years of my years that has brought me in contact with the great and mighty that has repositioned me from a lowly estate to an highly exalted state. It's mm -hmm. the hope that I've dealt with, the one that gave me hope in the midst of despair, in the midst of challenges of life, in the midst of sorrow. Mm -hmm. It stood by me as my advocate is the living God. It's yeah. the unchangeable changer that can change your situation. Mm -hmm. This is the hope that we are talking about. Hope in the unfailing word of God and his faithfulness. And so, brothers and sisters, there are several things in the life of Bartimaeus that I just want to dwell briefly on. And these seven things, I want us to take a critical look at them as it might resonate in our day-to-day -day life. The first thing with respect to the life of Bartimaeus was the fact that Bartimaeus had a difficult problem. It was a problem that defers solution. It was a health problem. It was a health or it was an issue of blindness. Four things that you need to know whenever a man has health-related problems. Money at times is disgraced. Money doesn't mean because you have money, uh, you will be healthy. Brothers and sisters, I remembered in the early days of the public awareness of AIDS in Nigeria. I was a student in this same citadel of learning, and I was approached by the 
by the leadership of the college to proceed and pray for a young man, but exalted and highly revered in the society. He came into one of the chalets at Redemption Camp, and as I approached him, I knocked on the door. He opened the door and was surprised. He looked at me and was amazed and said, who are you? I said, I'm the student pastor sent to pray with you. He said, oh, are you a pastor? I said, yes. I'm sorry for my way. And I approached him. And as I began to pray with him, this man had the best uh, seven series BMW packed in front of his lodge. Not only that, his standing, uh, his standing Toyota car was parked next to that. He, he was on his bed. And by the time he spoke, he said he had HIV AIDS. And the unfortunate thing was the fact that he said, there is no hope that he will survive. That is only prayer. Brothers and sisters, if you ever know and experience and see someone in a state of poor health, you will understand that money is not solution to everything. Here was this same man. Money could have sufficed, but there was no money to restore his blindness. Similarly, in the scripture, you find in the book of Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48. In the book of Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48, is the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible gives us detailed account of this woman that had 12 years of issues of blood to contend with. And simply, if you read the book of Leviticus up to verse 16, it describes vividly the nature of what this entails within the Jewish culture. And one of the futures is that this woman will be unceremonially clean. For 12 years, she had the issue of blood. Even with doing the modern science as a trier, medically, this woman would be a very weak woman. Not only that, would have lost serious blood. And apart from that one, this one was socially excluded from the community because of the Jewish law. But lo and behold, the interesting thing was that this sickness made her from being wealthy to being what? To being a poor woman. Because the physicians had made a mockery of her wealth. Brothers and sisters, Bartimaeus had a difficult problem. Health can reduce a man to penury. The history of the woman with the blood is a classical example. The top thing that happens to a man with health challenge is that the sick might be at the mercy of others. Mm. Brothers and sisters, your dignity and self-esteem as a man, when you are healed and healthy, you don't value it until when you are bedridden. Mm. Brothers and sisters, in the year 2000 and, uh, 2014, I was hospitalized at a hospital in the United Kingdom. And as I was hospitalized, I went into a minor surgery of, append of uh, appendicectomy. Unfortunately, uh, it was septic. And so by the time I was diagnosed, the operation was successful placed on the bed, had the first surgery. They realized it was septic after three days, went in for the second surgery. The evacuation took place. I was placed on, uh, on complete bed rest and uh, the wound will heal naturally. I never knew my brothers and my sisters that I could be so dependent as an adult that I couldn't even bath myself. The worst part was that I never knew that our dignity is only when we are healthy. Mm -hmm. As I sat on the bed one day, a huge force was oozing out of my body. About, and I checked out, I looked at myself. What is smelling? By the time I realized it, it was the pus coming from my body and I was alive. I was totally dependent on others for the basic things of life. If this is your situation, or you have someone that is totally dependent on others, I have good news for you. The law who did it for blind Bartimaeus is still in the business of changing times. Mm -hmm. It's still in the business of restoration. Mm 
Amen. It's still in the business of healing. Amen. It's still in the business of liberation. Amen. It's still in the business of bringing about healing. Amen. Irrespective of where you are in the spectrum of health, I am saying to you, tonight will be an exceptional night for you. Amen. Amen. And likewise, you could see, is the loss of dignity of life and isolation. Health problem could lead to that. You saw that in the case of Bacinius, he was isolated on the street, begging for harps. While others were going and following the miracle worker, he was isolated because he had no vision. Oh, check out this narrative in the book of John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. The man at the pool of Bethsaida. Here was a man at 38 years at the pool of Bethsaida. He has so many stories to, to talk about. Stories of almost getting there but never got there. Almost succeeding but never succeeded. Almost entering into the miracle water but never could meet with the angel in the water. He was isolated for 38 years. Brothers and sisters, whatsoever might have isolated you from the society, isolated you from the primary place of dwelling, isolated you from the world that God has positioned for you to inherit or possess. By the reason of tonight, the Lord shall break that band in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The second thing also was that Bartimaeus was at the mercy of men. Bartimaeus was at the mercy of men, which meant uh, he was begging for hands. His life was totally dependent on others. And this is quite important for us to have an understanding of the magnitude of his challenge. A typical example of this also is found in the book of Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. The book of Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 will see the case of the blind man at the beautiful gate. He also was at the mercy of men. He was begging for harms when Peter and John were going to the temple. And as he cried out, and they said, Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give unto you. Brothers and sisters, if your life, if your, if your situation is dependent on others, brothers, it's whatever you are offered. You have no say in it. Mm. No wonder David said in the, in the book of First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 13. First Chronicles 21, verse 13. It said that, it said, I quote, And David said unto God, I am in a great strait. Let me fall down into the hand of the Lord. For very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. Mm. Brothers and sisters, May you not be at the mercy of your fellow man beings. Amen. May the mercy of God continually speak on your behalf. Amen. Amen. When a man is at the mercy of others, you are limited. You are restricted. The person who is by providence having mercy on you will determine to what extent you enjoy life. And so you could imagine if Bartimaeus asks for hams and a man asks $10 and decides to give just $1. There's nothing Bartimaeus could do. Even mm -hmm. if you threw him 50 cents, there was nothing he could have done. Brothers and sisters, may you not be at the mercy of men. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone at the mercy of men simply means that the potential is untapped. Yes, my greatness might be locked in, but lo and behold, greatness needs to be manifested. The world is waiting for your manifestation. The Amen. world is looking for you to own your own position, be a voice in your generation. The Amen. world is expecting that you rule your, do, your, your domain. The world is expecting you to be whom God has created you to be. But Amen. when a man is at the mercy of another man, the potential is locked in. Mm. When a man is at the mercy of another man, you have no say in the actions against you. You are a mm. recipient of mercy. You are, just, uh, you are just receiving whatever comes your way. And so there's a need for us to have an understanding whenever we are praying that the Lord Almighty should have mercy on us. 
Amen. The third thing I want us to realize in that narrative also is that Bartimaeus was stagnated. He was unable to pursue a dream. He was unable to have any other thing. Blindness became part of his name. Mm. It was described by the nature of his affliction, the blind mm -hmm. Bartimaeus. The blind Bartimaeus. Even whenever we are preaching, the emphasis still goes on the blind Bartimaeus. Why? Because of his predicament. He couldn't change his status. He had other faculties functional. He had his hearing. He had his voice. But lo and behold, the dream of living beyond being a beggar was too far for him. So he accepted his faith and that faith became a reality. May you not accept the faith that is brought to you that is not destined for your purpose in life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so in the book of John chapter 5 verses 1 to 15 was equally the story of a man uh, at the pool of Bethsaida. It was a man that could be described uh, that was close to healing for 38 times. It was a man that failed 38 times. Mm. I could describe him as a serial failure because mm. he could tell the stories of those that had their healing. For 38 years, he waited at the pool of Bethsaida that as soon as the angels drops and steers the water, the first person to get into it will be healed. And so for 38 years, he laid at, his, at, the, at the pool of Bethsaida. But the interesting thing is the fact that he failed 38 times. Brothers and sisters, it is not over yet. Irrespective of you experiencing failure in certain aspects of life, it doesn't mean you are a complete failure. Mm -hmm. It's just to tell you one more chance might open the day of your joy. Another move might open a new song for you. Because Amen. I know joy cometh in the morning. Because Amen. the Bible says when he turned around the captivity of Zion, it was like them that dream. Yeah. Uh, weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Psalm 30 verse 6 describes it. I want you to be ecstatic because whatever might be called failure is defined by your perception. Mm -hmm. Here this man was grappling with the, with the self-inflicted perception that I've accepted my faith for 38 years, nobody could help me. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, if you are looking for someone to be your destiny helper and you are still looking for man, man will fail you. Mm -hmm. The harm of flesh will let you down. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking you to trust in the one that is ever faithful, the living one. The eternal one, the unchangeable changer, the true living God, the one that decrees a thing and is established, the mm. one that opened the door that no man can shut, Hallelujah. the one that liberates that no man can help captive, Amen. the one that decrees and ever answer. This mm -hmm. is the one that can make the difference in your journey. Mm. This is the one that can turn around your situation. And so, brothers and sisters, there's a need for us to have an understanding. Of that this man was stagnated for 38 years. But lo and behold, he got his miracle at last. Amen. The fourth thing I want you to also to note in that particular narrative in the book of Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52 is that uh, Bartimaeus was economically disadvantaged. He was begging for hands. Mm. He was begging for hands. Brothers and sisters, I want you to have a very good understanding of this. <laughs> if you are not there, you are not there yet. Mm. Except you are there, you will not understand it. If you have never gone through this, you will only just be imagining it. In the year 2000, I was privileged to be outside the shore of this country. And my host accommodated me for three months. And after three months, my host decided to give me the left foot of fellowship and booted me out of the accommodation, not because of my transigence, not because of my, of my any, anything unethical, but because, well, as I heard later, 
is the culture of the town. That is a welcome sign that you are now in diaspora. But brothers and sisters, within those two months, I was sleeping in the fields in winter. I was I had pneumonia. And if you have that in England, you must be very poor. I was at the mercy. I was economically disadvantaged. Mm. My friend thought it was over with me. He said, mm. what can you become? Who are you? Am I walking here to make you rich? Or why did you come to you to United Kingdom? You think we pick money on the streets? Brothers and sisters, I was living in the field in broad daylight in the dead of the night. Snow was coming in December. Nowhere to hide my head. But brothers and sisters, I can tell you barely three years after, the economically disadvantaged person became a house owner. The economically Amen. disadvantaged regained his position in the society. The economically disadvantaged became celebrated. The economically disadvantaged became a source of attraction and a great historian with respect to the church of Africa in diaspora. Amen. This is what the Lord can do. Hallelujah. Irrespective of where you are, listen to me. There's all for a change, a Amen. positive change. Amen. 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 And so you realize in this particular case, the person that kicked me out for almost 10 years after the Lord blessed me in diverse ways could not even own one plot of land. Mm. Brothers and sisters, because you are economically advantaged today does not mean your life cannot nose dive. Mm. The greatest thing that any man should always fear is the fear of changing fortune. <laughs> but there is no need for a man on the floor to fear because he cannot go below where he or she is. And so, this same God can give you a divine blueprint in order to change your destiny. This same God can change around the tide of being economically disadvantaged. The story of Jacob and Laban is a classical example. A divine blueprint was given to Jacob and Jacob uh, to Jacob and Jacob mastered the blueprint and decided in Genesis 30 verses 37 to 43. Genesis 30, 37 to 43. We are back at the end of the day. Jacob outwitted the smart Laban and paid Laban in his own coins and went away with abundance. It was a divine blueprint. Brothers and sisters, are you in business? Are you looking for a move from where you are? The Lord can give you a blueprint towards your success. Amen. He can give you a blueprint in terms of your idea. Men mm. might see men walking like trees. You might see it as an artistic impression. Mm. And whenever you present it, men will buy it because it's divinely inspired. Mm. Listen to me. You need to hear the voice of God tonight. Whatever it is that is on your plan that you are holding on to, lift it up to God and say, Lord, give me ideas with respect to this. Mm. Show the world what I can be through this particular thing. Breathe upon my dear Lord. Inspire me. Do a new thing. Amen. The thing that you need to understand about Bartimaeus was that Bartimaeus, all help had failed him at that time. Mm. All help had failed him. All mm. help had failed him. No one could change a situation. No one could change a situation. Mm. And so you realize no wonder he cried out because he had the revelation of the Messiah and cried out, Son of David, Son of David, which meant he was saying, Son of David, you are the Savior of the world. Yeah, save me, restore my sight. And Jesus was so comical when he said, he said, what would you have me do? He said, that I might receive my sight. He saw he was blind. But I wanted him to make a pronouncement, a pronouncement from his man of admission of his limitation, whereby he can publicly demonstrate that is the all maker is the one that can turn the tide around. Amen. He all have filled 
Bartimaeus. The sixth thing was that Bartimaeus was not equal with his peers. He was limited because he had no power of vision. Mm. This also impacted his stagnation. This also impacted his economic well-being. He had eyes but could not see. Oh, mm. Ellen Keller said, if there's anything that is worse than being blind, is not having vision. Mm. Brothers and sisters, tonight, where is your vision? Is your vision still, are you in tow with your vision? Or what God has promised you? Or what God showed you several years ago? And so, brothers and sisters, the, set, the seventh thing, as I want to begin to pray in about two minutes, is the fact that Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus was a man that was despised. Mm. He was mm. extremely despised because when Jesus had his cry, they said, keep quiet, keep quiet. Again, he cried, and Jesus stood still. And Jesus told those that said, keep quiet, bring in. And they brought him. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, wherever you might have been despised, those who despise you can be the hand of your miracle. Amen. Amen. The Lord can use them to even bring you to a point of your fulfillment. Amen. You do not need to fight. Let the Lord let them live so that they can see the glory of God. Amen. And so there were three things or four things that the devil made a mistake. We, the devil may, has made a mistake about your life too as you are here tonight. The first mistake the devil made was that uh, Bartimaeus was only blind. But Bartimaeus could hear and speak. Mm. Can I hear your voice there tonight? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 But Simeon was only blind. But the mm. devil did not make him to be deaf and dumb. Mm. If he was deaf and dumb, he couldn't have had the opportunity of even hearing about Christ. And so I am saying to you, the devil has made a mistake about your life. Amen. Whatsoever yeah. might be the limitation. Forget about it. You are still alive. Amen. Because you are alive, you can experience a positive change. Amen. Help can arise for you. Amen. Amen. And so the second thing also that the devil made the mistake was that Bartimaeus was blind, but he still had his sanity. Brothers and sisters, our case is not as worse as the madman of Gadarene. I am sure everyone on this platform can shout hallelujah because you have your sanity. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, if it were otherwise, men who could sign so to psychiatric home, even the madman of Gadara was living in a land of riches but of inactivity. He was living in the graveyard. Mm. That was the richest spot. The rich, the mighty, all that they hold, the heart was just six feet. And it was struggling within them. He was enjoying being in the midst of dead, inactive people. Long forgotten. Songs that we are never sung. Hymns that we are never written. Books that we are never written. Greatness that we are never celebrated. He was the chief of them because he was still alive. But lo and behold, as soon as he had an encounter, the man regained his sanity and mm -hmm. he became an evangelist. Hallelujah. He never has lost it because you are still alive. Amen. The top thing is the fact that Bartimaeus was blind, but the devil did not take away the revelational knowledge of the appointed time. Mm. Just like the way the sons of Issachar the Bible says they have, we are men that had understanding of times and season. The word season has two words. You have the kairos and you have the, the chronos, which is the English derivative of the word chronometer. Okay. 
Mm. And the Kairos is an appointed time in the sovereign will of God for a meaningful, impactful change in the life of an individual. Brothers and sisters, this is your moment that God has appointed for you. Amen. It's set time for you to have a divine encounter. Amen. It's set time for you to Amen. have a divine upliftment. Amen. It's a set time in which he wants to rewrite your story. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, irrespective of the level of success you've had before, you can move from being what, well, from being good to being from being good to being better and to be best. Amen. But listen to me, what could be generational? Your father was rich, but you can be what you can be richer than your father, you can be exceedingly rich. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I say to you again. But Timios was despised by the crowd. But the devil did not take away the crowd to see the greatness and restoration of Batimios. Mm -hmm. I am saying to you, wherever you have been despised, whatsoever they might have said behind you, it is time for them to witness your turnaround. Amen. Your turn around will start from tonight. Amen. Just shout a resounding hallelujah to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, there's a time now for us to pray. I want us to lift up our voice unto God and just begin to bless Him for the gift of life. Thank Him for His faithfulness over the years. Yes, it's worthy to be magnified. Rebos kebo zanda labas kebo zanda labas keba. Rabas zanda labas kebo zengerebo. Rebas sundo labas kebo zengereba. Lebo sundo robo. Rabas kebo zengerebo zanda raba. Rebas zanda labas kebo zengerebo. Rebas sundo labas kebo zengereba. Rebas sundo labas kebo. For your loving kindness, for oh, yes. your mercies that endure forever, for the wonderful yes. work of your creation. Oh, Rivas Kayaba Sandala Baskebo, bless him for his faithfulness. Thank him for the gift of life. It's worthy to be magnified. It's worthy to be magnified. Rivas Sandala Baskebo Sengereba, Rivas Sandala Baskebo Sengereba, Rivas Sandala Baskebo Sengereba, Rivas Sandala Baskebo. Christ spoke a word into the life of Bartimaeus, and immediately he received the sight. He recognized that it was his Kairos moment. You are going to lift up your voice to God tonight. Wherever you are, please just, just spend the next 15 minutes crying unto God. And you're going to say, Father, Father, let tonight be my appointed time for positive oh change. Let tonight be my appointed time for positive change. In my life, begin to talk to Almighty God. Father, Lord, let tonight be my appointed time for positive change. So if I might be the career trajectory that has been truncated, so if the enemy might have done over the lives of these world on this platform, Rebus Kayaba Jigerebo, let tonight be the turning point. It's the appointed time for their exaltation. Rabas Kayabo, Shaka, 
Brethren, I want to encourage you in faith tonight. In the year 2015, the speaker that you are listening to, by the grace of God, was indebted to the tune of 167,000 pounds sterling. But by the year October 2018, the Lord said, I should make a move. And within one day, the whole debt was wiped away by a revelation. Hallelujah. That this is my set time for deliverance from the body of debt. Amen. Amen. I want you to lift up your voice unto God. Yes, Lord. I don't know where you are. I don't know who you are. The burden of death over your life is bothering you. Yes. I want you to cry unto God tonight. Father, Father, Father. divine blueprints divine blueprint for my economic emancipation. Let me receive tonight revelation for the divine He's your redeemer, he's your king's man redeemer, he's your savior. Oh, Cry out 
Jesus, Brothers and sisters in Christ, persistence wears down a man. Yes. But Simeon cried out and said, Son of David, Son of David. In the multitude, Jesus yes. had the voice. He cried again, Son of David, Son of David. And Jesus had. Brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, the people that brought Bartimaeus were helpers of his destiny. Yes, Lord. They despised him, but lo and behold, they still went and brought him to the master. Hallelujah. I am saying those who are standbys. There are three categories that you are familiar with. They are waiting for the day of the shape. Some are waiting what can become of his life. Some are waiting when the game is over. But surely as the Lord liveth. Surely as the oracle of the living God. None of their intention or their thoughts will come to pass over you in the name of Jesus. So we are going to lift up our voice unto God and cry. Father. Father. Everyone connected to my destiny. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they fulfill their purpose in my life. Do not let them rest until they Complete assignment to Lord to work in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be afraid of the Lord. 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 Oh, <laughs> 
As Bartimaeus was about to be taken to Jesus, he realized he had his garment on, which was more or less injuring his mobility. Mm -hmm. He immediately removed it in order for him to be able to move swiftly so that he can meet with the Savior. And that garment that I removed marked a, was a prophetic statement that the past is over Amen. and a new dawn is Amen. beginning. Amen. Amen. You are going to lift up your voice unto God and you are going to cry unto God. Father, Amen. from today, let me have a visible sign of the victory over the past, of the victory over the past, over delays, over shame. Over challenges, let me have a visible evidence tonight. Talk to your mighty God. Let me testify tonight. A new dawn has started in my life, a new dawn in my family, over my children. 
Lift up your voice and tell your mind to the Lord. Send the rabbis to you. 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 Send the rabbis Every shape waiting to be Lord, you have created it. For Rima Sundalo was Kabo Jenkaraba, Rima Sandala was Kabo Jenkaraba, Brethren, I want to draw your attention to the fact that there are some stubborn enemies that the Lord has to deal with before mm. you can move forward. Yes, mm. For the children of Israel to be liberated, Pharaoh had to be drawn. Mm. For the nation of Israel to get their victory through David, the arrogant Goliath that paraded himself for 40 days was disgraced mm. by above mm. 70 mm. years. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your voice? Yes, Lord. Are there perennial issues in your own family? Are there perennial issues over your household? I want you to lift up your voice to God. Whatsoever might be the source of my predicament. Yes, Lord. Whatsoever might be the source of my challenge. Yes, Lord. By the reason of this corporate prayer tonight, Father, please deal with such challenges in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go to the Almighty God. Every
every pharaoh that needs to be drawn over your matter. We have to go tonight. We find this sitting on your throne. It had to be seated as the queen. Vashti was the throne. Move on. In order for me to enter the fullness of my destiny. Children to fulfill their destiny. Why to fulfill our purpose in life? God let God's judgment begin today. In today, so ever myself would not enjoy the labor of my my labor over my children, especially over my calling, over my academic strength. Don't move them away. I will not plan for another to in my life. It's not according to your purpose. That is an obstacle but continue relevance. You to move them away. Oh, everyone has standing as an opposition to me, opposition to the purpose of God. I am working opposition against the move of God in my life. Ah, Father, deal with such. Oh, Rima said the Lava Scabble Shake it about. Deal with such. Deal with such. No more making about shot at the end. I decree over every one of this platform in your family. Every negative pronouncement working against the word over your children, over your household, over your family, it will not pass by any power. By the power that is above every other being. Say by the name of Jesus, every day shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Oh, we break the stronghold of family and evil forces, negative pronouncement over your life or oh, your siblings in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rema Zandalabas, I was a true knight, a lovely enough. Every Pharaoh standing as opposition to you cross with the rats. Oh, you will cross over your Jordan. Cross over your Jordan. Cross over your Jordan. Cross over your Jordan. You will cross over your Jordan. You will cross over your Jordan. Oh, the person the rebels came about Jangaraba Sandalaba. No more limitation. No more barrier. Abbas Kaba Sandalaba Skabos in the rebels came to Lava. Rebels in the rebels came to Lava. Skabos and Lava. Rebels in the rebels came to 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 Lava. Ripa <laughs> 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 
that every enemy of my program be swallowed in Jesus name we are praying amen firstly we have to pray immediately Pharaoh was buried and the children of Israel were already on the other side Miriam sang a new song it was a song of victory it was a song of celebration he Amen. said the horse and the rider has been thrown into the sea. Amen. And I decree, Amen. surely as the oracle of the Lord, that every stubborn pursuer of your destiny, every stubborn pursuer of the destiny of your family, of your children, they are dethroned tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to lift up your voice now and say, Father, Father, give me a new song of triumph and celebration. Father, give me a new song of triumph and celebration. A new song of triumph and celebration. You say, My life is on the ground. Jesus, I turn it around for good for you. The time for celebration is a time of laughter. After yes, we emanate in your home, we emanate in your family. Over your businesses, you begin to see great things unprecedented. Then we begin to call you of your own accord. We go ahead of you because he has given you victory. Oh, you no longer struggle to be hard or sin by pain. This is the sin. Of your visibility is a season of your celebration. No man will be able to stop you on the dancing floor. Oh, Rebos Cables and Galabas Cables. The Lord has lifted you for the Lord has Rebos Cables and Galabas Cables. Rebos Santa Rebos Cables. Rebos Cables and the Rebos Cables. Rebos Santa Rebos Cables. Rebos Santa Rebos Cables. Rebos Santa Rebos Cables. Faithfulness tonight, all the turnaround, the hope he has given you. The Masanda Rabaskebo Shengereba. No, 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 no. No one can steal your joy anymore. It is time for you to be hard and hard loudly. God 
This will be our last prayer point before I pray for everyone on this platform and I will take my leave. And the prayer is simple. And you're going to say, Father, Father, I cry to you tonight. I cry to you tonight. I cry to you tonight. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. Let me meet with your bowels of mercy. Let me meet with your bowels of mercy. Mercy every day. Mercy speaking on behalf of your children. Wherever there is not men, mercy will speak. Wherever there is death, life will emanate. Wherever there is shame, testimony will emanate for you. Wherever others are disqualified, you are qualified. Whenever men are falling, you are rising. Mercy on daily basis. Mercy on daily basis. Akunwa, Rabba, Rabba, Sandalaba, Anube, Rabba, Rabba, Kuyo, Ojekereba, Epo, Sanda, Rabba, Skebo, I need your mercy, Lord. Mercy over me, over my household, over my children. Let your mercy speak. Over me, I want the redeemed to the Bible. Lord, let your mercy continue to speak. Let your mercy, let your mercy. Oh, Remoska, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, let it speak. Oh, Remoska, oh my God, on daily basis, over till I let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Oh, to the land that the rebels came to Santa Lava, Rima Santa Lava came to Jengerebo, Santa Lava came to Jengerebo, Santa Lava came to Jengerebo, Absolute Lava came to Jengerebo, Rima Santa Lava came to Jengerebo, Santa Lava came to Jengerebo. I am blessed with you. I am blessed with you. Jesus, wonderful name we are praying. Amen. A most excellent Lord. Yes, Daddy. You are worthy to be magnified. Yes, Amen. You are worthy to be lifted up. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. The Bible says you are the one that opened the door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. And you are the one that closed the door that no man can open. Hallelujah. Father, we we'll thank you for the time that we have spent together. Yes, Lord. In crying unto you. Because I am persuaded there is more than one righteous person in this gathering. Oh. And so we are persuaded that the effectual for them prayer of the righteous has availed for us tonight. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you because, Lord, whatever had been our limitation, whatever had taken away our joy, yes, Lord. by the reason of tonight, mm. Lord, we will fulfill our purpose in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Declare concerning everyone connected to the families on this platform. Yes, Lord. Lord, let there be divine connection. Amen. Amen. Lord, we are asking you turn around those seven things in the life of Bartimaeus. Yes, Lord. Is there any form of stagnation? Is there any form of economic strangulation? Is there any form of social exclusion being experienced by your children? By the reason of this decree, Lord, let there be a positive turnaround in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree that wheresoever your empire of destinies are, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, let there be a shaking for their gathering unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The people that shut down Bartimaeus thought they were doing a great service to the ministry of Jesus. But lo and behold, they became his empires of destiny. Yes, Lord. Everyone that has mocked you before, um, everyone that despised your advancement before, yes, anyone Lord. waiting for your day of shame or your day of calamity, Mm. We come together in order to rejoice with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Yes, Lord. I decree unto you, wherever people might gather, in order for you not to rejoice, mm. surely in the seventh month, mm. surely yes, in the month of July, Yes. Your household will rejoice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you turn around the life of Bartimaeus by your spoken word. And so, Lord, tonight, I decree unto your children, it shall be well with you. Amen. It shall be well with your family. Amen. It shall be well with your children. Amen. Amen. Have a well with your businesses. Amen. Amen. No falter. Amen. You will not fail God. Amen. Amen. The satanic quota that is left this year, you will not be part of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not walk into error. Amen. Amen. Error will be far from you. Amen. Amen. When there's a casting that there'll be a lifting up for you. Amen. Amen. Wherever you go this year, that will bring danger unto you. You will not go beyond the limit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord will honor you. Amen. The Lord will uphold you. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. Amen. I pray for rivers of joy as a parish. Lord, let it be from glory to glory. Amen. From honor to honor. Amen. I pray for our pastor and the ministers. Please, Father, continue to increase them. Amen. Let it be well with your church. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen.